Okay. So we're back here with another wrap-up video. This one is for Resident Evil Revelations 2. Um, oh, that game was a lot shorter than I remember it being. Um, Which was good, though. I guess, um, for me, it was, you know, only having four chapters divided into two playable characters. I, I think that's a unique idea. Um, I mean, that's one of the merits the game has going for it. Um... I'm not so sure about the permanent escort mission of two characters. It didn't work for Resident Evil Zero, and I feel like it doesn't work now. Um, so we're just going to go in and we're going to rate this one based on our normal ratings. Um, so we're going to go first with the graphics, um, and we're back in the Xbox One in this era. So, um, Is it Xbox One? Yeah. I swear to God I sent it to JB... Yeah, it was released for um, 360 as well. But yeah. the one we played uh, just then, it was it was Xbox One. Mm -hmm. um, so graphics, I think they're okay. I mean, I think that um, Evil Within was better. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Evil Within shit all over the graphic, like graphics for us. Like, okay, there are some cool effects in this, like. Like, the water effects, like, you know, when you come out of water. I mean, nobody dries that quickly, but, you know, it's a video <laughs> game, do. so we can let that pass. <laughs> um, you know, th those are cool effects. But, like, I feel like there's so much more they could have done. Like, you shoot an enemy in the head, and it just dies. Its head doesn't explode or anything like that. And Evil Within definitely had that yeah. going for it. So, being that the same creator created both games, and the enemy design is very similar to Evil Within. Yeah. Um... I just feel like it's, it's See, a bit tame graphics wise. The thing that got me too was there was like no bullet wounds or anything like that. Not even that. It was just a little squirt of blood, and yeah, you, you didn't even know if if they're hit or not. Yeah, and you know, like even if you'd like shoot off an arm or yeah, you know, when you oh, blow... apart from the shadow puppet things, you oh yeah yeah, you hit the fucking inflamed skin. That's probably the most violent part of the game apart from um some of the insta kill death scenes like where barry gets snapped in half by those fucking <laughs> big old bag of tits oh, the old, big old bag of tits yeah um so all in all i think graphics are average yeah and i feel like an xbox one game could do so much better so mm. i feel like they sort of took the xbox 360 graphics polished them a little bit and then was like well here's the game you know they, yeah. i don't feel like they they redid did it so much for xbox one it feels more like a port from the Xbox 360 version yeah. of the game. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give this a 7, I think, for graphics. Because it could be better, it could be worse. Yeah. Sort of mediocre. Mm. See, I liked the, cut the cutscenes. No, the cutscenes are very... I thought the, yeah. those graphics were really good. They were really clear and just there was a lot... Of, I found a lot of detail in the face and... True, the, oh yeah, true. There was a lot, like, yeah, like the cutscenes. That, cut was, scenes, that yeah. was really good. I like them. Because I the kind ends, of felt like I was actually looking at a real person at times. So I was like, is that actually... Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, the yeah. cutscenes were really... Drawing. Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because the cutscenes actually were really well polished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were and, good. And like um, at the end, in the ending cutscene, where like Barry and Moira are like covered in dirt, and like that's that's very realistic. Yes. Like, like Claire's really clean because she's just come from wherever. Wherever. And yeah, straight from the fucking shower. And even <laughs> like the little details, like um, Natalia, how like her. Her like jumper was dirty and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that's how it would be after being stuck on a line. Oh, that was good. For, yeah. Um, so long. Yeah. Um, so I think on to gameplay itself. Wait, we didn't uh, give our bottles for that. Oh, sorry. We should probably do our rating. Yeah. <laughs> it's not oh, a well, whole I, idea. I gave it a seven. I gave it seven bottles yeah, out seven. of him. Okay. Might... Well, you just cut me off, so you just sorry. kept going with the next one. <laughs> um, so I see so those graphics may going to bump it up to an eight. No, for yeah, me, okay. that just yep. not yeah. Yeah, that's a six from me. Oof, it's a bit harsh from the old <laughs> Ian. He's like he's like our Simon Cow. <laughs> yep. uh, so overall, let's say seven point five out of ten. I yeah. think. Ten with me. Um, gameplay itself. Uh, I I really I don't have much to gripe about. It's just it, it's becoming very standard for um, third person games to have the over the shoulder camera. Yeah. Um, gone are the days of like. That nice fixed behind you camera, like a. I feel like it's a little more realistic having the camera over the shoulder. Like, mm. mm -hmm. um, it's a little more immersive, I guess. Um, 
like I'm not huge on first person games, but you know, certain games that works well, like shooters uh, are good as first person. I don't think this would work. So I think having that in between works really well. Um, the controls themselves uh, are tight and responsive, although I did find a lot of the time that, like, characters would stop at an edge you could fall off and be like, ooh, shit. But then sometimes they would just walk off the edge, as you guys would have seen with Claire in Chapter 4. Four when they're that's chapter three when three. they're escaping the building. Yeah. Um, and the she just, just ran randomly clean, sitting down and yeah. pushing herself off. I know. Like, like what? <laughs> like at what point is she not going to stop and think? Hmm. Maybe this is not a good idea. Fucking AI. Maybe she got, maybe she got fed up with you not figuring out the puzzle and said, oh, "I'm I'm done." Just off to finish. <laughs> just, just fainted herself. Yeah. No more. <laughs> um, so. No, other than that, I think the gameplay was really responsive. The the aiming probably leaves a little bit to be desired, uh, but maybe I'm just shit. I don't know. Um, I think it's really hard to aim at enemies that are right on top of you, and I think a lot of the time enemies are right on top of you, especially mm. those fucking things that explode, the gut busters. Yeah, they are, gut busters. They are the worst. Um, I think gameplay for me gets a pretty solid eight. Yeah, it's... There's nothing more to be said, really. That's true. Yeah, no, I'd have to agree with that. Um, I know a lot of the times when I was playing, I, did, I felt tense. Because I was just like, nope. I don't know if I like going around this corner. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm probably going to... you just pan the camera around. You stay hidden behind the wall, pan the camera, camera around. around. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Um, now, for me, I think I'll give it... Um, yeah, I'll give it an eight. Yeah, I'm an eight as well. Uh, well, it's an eight from us. Um, level design. Now, uh, duh. This, fuck, it got repetitive. Uh, yes, In them fucking yes, sewers. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Oh, we've got to be nearly be there. No, it's another fucking sewer room. I just oh, wanna... you cannot run in the water, but fucking yeah. blamos come out of nowhere. I just want to say that uh, Barry visiting the same areas probably wasn't the greatest... No. Like Barry had a few areas where he 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 uh, he went to that Moira and Claire didn't like yeah, the quarry a and the crane and and so on and so forth. Yeah. But Barry's areas were very tedious. I found, like, <laughs> not just because I'm shit at figuring out puzzles, but like just like Barry's campaign seemed like puzzle after puzzle, whereas Claire is kind of a little more action orientated. Yes. Mm. Um, but in saying that, to level design, the, the very generic environments, prison, forest. Um, you know, building site, um, tower, uh, quarry. You know, they're not, you know, sewers. They're not. No. They're not like great atmosphere building. They don't like the thing about Resident Evil is it's a fantasy game, so it doesn't have to be straight edge all the time. And there have been games in the series that have proved that it hasn't. Um, but like when you take environments like in in previous Resident Evil games, like um. Resident Evil 5 that takes place in, uh, you know, Africa and, um, you know, Resident Evil 6, which has a lot of varying locations, like a high school and like a, um, like a dilapidated Russian country and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it's all, overall it creates an interesting experience because you don't get bored, but here I feel like you're looking at the same grey, boring environments all the time. The only thing I want to say about the level design that I think is cool is the the whole thing about Barry being six months behind. That's really cool. In like yeah. when he goes into the sewers, all the water's dried up because it's been six months. I, I don't know how water evaporates from sewers after six months. Mm. All the blamos are aged. Yeah, yeah. All the <laughs> all the all the zambovos are uh, are aged. You know, they're all crusty and old. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that's cool, but other than that, I feel like uh, they could have given a little bit more inventiveness to their environments. Mm. So well, I think for me it's a five because I don't. There was no sort of level that made me go, "Wow, that's cool." This yeah. is like, true. Yeah. You know, probably probably the, the the best looking level for me was when Claire and Moira are, are escaping the tower because that whole level, like the the futuristic design of the overseer's room, and yes, and then the um the you know the escaping and the, and the whole looking down into the ocean kind of thing probably the coolest level design but that was good other yeah. than that no 
everything's pretty generic, so I'm going to say 5 out of 10 for me. Yeah. Um, 5 for me as well. 4. It just got repetitive. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so level design's going to get a 5 from us overall. Yeah, the story. Now, for me, uh, I guess the opinion of somebody who's a long-time Resident Evil plan, um, fan, who's played pretty much all of the games, including the shit ones, yes, that includes Resident Evil Survivor. It's a terrible game. Um, for me, like, you, you would think that it would have sort of a connection to Resident Evil Revelations, but it doesn't. Um, it's more connected to Resident Evil 6. And it didn't occur to me to this time, which is only my second playthrough, that the ending sequence with Claire, um, you know, like going to Barry and, and Moira's house, uh, that she is, like, it takes place somewhere before Resident Evil 6, I believe. So that's cool where it fits in on the timeline, but, like... I don't feel like it develops very well. Uh, the storyline's not that exciting, and um, as Michelle and I did briefly discuss in Chapter 4, Barry's chapter, how similar it is to Wesker's sort of... Like, how, how similar Alex Wesker is to Albert Wesker, and how, how I feel like some of the storylines have been recycled a little bit. Um, so, like, for example, um, in Resident Evil 1, Wesker injects himself with the virus... Um, and he, like, you know, and then he becomes sort of an adversary. And in this, it's sort of like a condensed version of Albert's story. She injects herself with the virus. She becomes a creature. Then she injects herself with the Ouroboros virus. Then she hunts down the characters. And, and, and Wesker kind of did the same thing in um, in Resident Evil 5. He injected himself with the Ouroboros virus. And he become like, the main adversary. And so I feel like the storyline didn't have a lot to offer. Now, um... Obviously, that ending scene with Claire and um, Natalia reading that passage from that book, obviously that means something. Um, maybe that'll be revealed in a future Revelations game. I don't know. I don't even know if there will be a Revelations game. Um, but for me, knowing what I know about the overarching storyline of Resident Evil, it didn't progress things much for me. Um, but taken on its own merit, like the whole fear um, being the virus, that that's a pretty cool concept. Yes. Um, and now I want to hear from people who have never played the game. Like, if you're just taking this as a standalone game, forget that it's a part of a bigger, bigger franchise. Mm. If if you were just picking this up, if this game had another title, what would you think of the storyline? So I didn't. I didn't mind the storyline. I thought it was quite interesting because it sort of it made you think as to okay, Barry's turned up six months later. Okay, what's happened in that time? And I mean, like, I'm probably not going to explain this very well, but. Um, I just, I, I, yeah, I don't know. There was, I did, I did like that, but um, it was the ending that really sort of disappointed me because it didn't really tie up many loose ends. Yeah. Because I kind of wanted to know, okay, how did Moira get out? You know, what is the go with the little girl? But now it turns out we may have to wait for that. Yeah, but, and, I, and I can tell you, I've played the bonus chapters, and it still doesn't really answer many uh, questions. So, mm. and oh, I just got confused. It was one big head fuck for me. <laughs> I couldn't get my head around it whatsoever. There, yeah, there are times, though, it was kind of like a bit like, oh, this is weird. You did feel, <laughs> you did feel confused, but... Oh, yeah, definitely. But Yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, for me, it's a seven. Yeah, I'm going to go with a seven, I think. Yep. Six. <laughs> Always I, I need a fucking ten. He, he needs, a, needs a ten of piss. Um, so we'll move on to bosses now. Um, so we had, we had, uh, Pedro, we yeah. had Neil, Neil, and we had Alex. Was there any? Big tits. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I guess there was, um, That's... I guess there was that mini boss thing. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that thing that appears, uh, I reckon I might have to get a Jamison going in a minute. Well, fucking hurry up. Um. Yeah, there was that, that mini-boss thing that appears three times. I feel like that was, like, for the first time I experienced it, that was a really difficult boss, but the second time, not so much. So, yeah. um, I feel like there could have been more bosses. Like, oh, okay, so, even within this boss fight simulator 2016, but, like, <laughs> I feel like this game lacked 
bosses. Yeah. It lacked yeah. that. Sword, dead space. It, yeah, it, it lacked that tense feeling like, ooh, shit, when's the next big boss going to come? When's more, the next ammo sink going to come out? You know? It was more puzzles. Yeah. And that's what yeah. it was. Like, <laughs> yeah. the, the puzzles are the boss. As opposed to other games in the Resident Evil series, this one is very puzzle heavy. Um, but basing the bosses on their design, very, very cool and unique. Like the fact that when Pedro transforms, he becomes like fused with the drill and like that yeah. becomes his weapon. Like, I mean, he, he was sort <coughs> of just a, you know, a hulked out sort of zombie version of himself sort of thing. Kind of, yeah. Um, I think Neil by far is the co- one of the coolest bosses. Like just that whole concept of he has power, but like it's too much power. Mm-hmm. Like he's overheating all the time. Yes. Um, and okay. you could still talk to him. Like he still he knew who he was and he knew who you were. Yeah, like mm-hmm. he he retained that human intelligence, but like he was a creature. So like yeah. Um, and, and kind of the same with, I noticed, Alex too. She's the same. She still sort of um, retains, like, her human mind. Yeah. So, like, she's always trying to kill Natalia. Yeah, and, and that's she another thing. who she was. Yeah, that's another thing that's not explained, is why is Alex trying to kill Natalia? And why is she the true one and Natalia not? Is it because Natalia's immune to the virus, seemingly immune to the virus? Or? Well, makes, yeah, and well, that point where... Well, I, I noticed that her bracelet was red, Natalia. Yeah, well, that's what, yeah, that's what we were discussing. Yeah. Like, And Moira's, wasn't it? Yeah, Moira's at the end yeah. turned red. So I'm, I'm actually just wondering if, like, Natalia is, like, made from, like, Alex's DNA. Like, if she's going to turn it to be, like, the future antagonist of a game, one of the other games or something like that. Maybe. Um, but, yeah, like, she was a cool design, too. Like, as far as bosses go, like, you know, the, the metal spine and, yeah. and all that. Like, I, I don't know where that comes from, though, because, like, the virus can't create metal, so... No. Um, something different. But, yeah, like, she, she was a cool boss. Um, again, we come back to the cliche, defeating the final boss with the rocket launcher. That yeah. happens a lot. The rocket launcher. Yeah, it just... <laughs> it happens a lot more than people realise. Yes. That, that it's just... Ooh, there just happens to be a rocket launcher lying around. Let's kill the final boss. And that, that happens in, um, in Resident Evil 1 as well. Uh, they conveniently drop a rocket launcher from a helicopter for you to use on the final yes. boss. Um, there's also a, uh, in, in Resident Evil 3, Nemesis, you don't so much, well, you do get a rocket launcher just before the final boss, but to finish the final form of the final boss, you use a rail cannon, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's basically just a giant cannon that comes out of a, like, wall, and basically it shoots on rails. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, but, like, yeah, look... Even though there was only a few bosses, I really enjoyed the design of them. Yeah. I thought they were... And and they required enough tactics to be... You know, I imagine if you were playing on, like, hard or or survival, they would be challenging, too. Like... Yeah. Sure, we smashed Alex, but, like, you can imagine how much more difficult that boss fight would be on a, on a higher difficulty Ugh. level. Yeah. I don't want to experience that All the things. fucking rage in the world. Oh, You'd yeah. fucking nearly be inhaling the universe just to fucking let a short outburst... <laughs> Okay. Yes. And now we move on to another one of those categories that's sort of, oh, I'm going to have a different... Oh, sorry, a bit of rating. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting ahead of yourself uh, there, Tyler. Well, generally helps. It's well, a long day at idea. work, not too much blood in the alcohol Excuses. stream. That's the problem, too much blood in the alcohol stream. Excuses. Alright, so let's rate these, let's rate the bosses. Oh, I'm going to give them, I'm actually going to give the bosses of this game a 9 out of 10, because... While there weren't many of them, they were cool, True. and and I I enjoyed them. I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the way they kept their humanity, yes. and and also how how like Neil served a purpose because not only did he drive the plot, but like he helped Moira overcome her fear of guns, mm. and right. I feel like maybe uh. the ending would be different if now it's something I haven't tested because what if Claire grabbed the gun? That's what I'm cu- like. Is the ending different if she doesn't overcome her fear of guns? Does she die because she gets eaten alive because you know she's on her own? And, like that's like she comes in and saves Barry. So what happens if she never overcomes that fear of guns? Yeah. 
that is something I'm actually going to have to go back and test. Mm. There's probably a, a false yeah, yeah, ending. Yeah, you, you, you fainted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what will happen. There's probably a, <laughs> probably, probably a false ending there. So it's something that, I, I'd, like to, um, that I'd like to test when I've got time. Mm. Uh, um, so, yeah, they get a nine from me, Michelle. I'm going to give an eight. Yeah, I'm giving it an eight. So uh, 8.5 overall from us for the bosses. Um, now, this is another one of those uh, categories where it's going to be a little different for me uh, because I guess being a fan of the Resident Evil series, um, I've sort of, how do you put it, built rapport with these characters. Like, I've done a lot more, you know, I've played a lot more of their games, you know. So I understand a lot more about them, like, you know, Resident Evil 1, you know, Barry, Resident Evil 2, Claire. So for me, the characters are pretty well established. Uh, obviously, the only exceptions being Moira and um, Natalia, because they're not in any other game. It's their de- this is their debut game sort of thing. Um, so, look, Claire, Claire has always been my favourite Resident Evil character, closely followed by Jill, so... Um, pretty clear what I think about the uh, about Claire um, and Barry you know Barry has his own merits he's cool um, so I'll just touch on the new characters uh, I think Natalia she adds a good sort of mystery like she has sort of psychic powers and Alex Wesker is scared of her for some reason mm. that's never explained there's a lot that's never explained so I really hope we see more of Natalia because her like little side story makes me really curious to want to see more. Like maybe we'll see a like a, a game with a teenage version of her or something where her That's powers have developed more or something. Um, and I, and I think that um, I think that Capcom can really run with that. I think that they can make it a little more supernatural. Like yeah. you know she she can only see them now as a child, but what about when she gets older, sort of thing? But her powers increase or something. Yeah. Like that. Mm. But didn't you have a theory last night that she doesn't age? Didn't you say that well, at some point? Yeah, I think there's no like there's no way of knowing um, how how much time has passed mm. when, when that ending cutscene plays. Like um, you you only see Claire and you only see Natalia. You don't see. Barry or Moira or Polly, yeah. you just then hear them. You don't them. see the whole lot of Natalia. You only see really the back of her and her jawline. No, so it could be a um, could be a teenage version, but I, I think that like she may not age, but she could age. So, mm. like I said, there's a lot to be explained. Interesting. So, um, I think she's a really good addition. Um, as for Moira, uh, she takes after her old man, Big Bazza Beef Steak. Yeah, oh yeah. She she's okay, but I found her to be a little bit whiny. Yeah. But I really like her, like how they've made her like this, um, like sweary, sarcastic sort of teenager. It's like I hate my dad, you know, till they make amends in the yes. end. Yeah. Um, Typical teenager. So you know she can be a little bit whiny at times, but I think you know a little bit of character development wouldn't hurt. Mm. Um, you know, if she appears in future games, she may never be seen again. But it's really cool that they included Barry's daughter, like. You know that's that's really awesome. Yeah. Um, so for me, uh, just rating the new characters, they get probably for me um, a seven out of ten. What about you overall? For somebody who doesn't really follow the yeah. franchise. Um. As, yeah. As you said, with more, I don't know. She sort of to me didn't really bring too much to the story. Like she, I don't know. I just wasn't interested she in her as a much. She wielded a fucking crowbar. That's about it. I think that was as yeah. much as she could do until. The end when she obviously wielded the gun. Um, Natalia, yeah, she does, yeah, like give you that bit of mystery about her. Like you kind of wonder, oh, is there you actually good here? Are you, or are you a demon? Are you a yeah. demon child? Yeah, well, why can you point with a brick but you can't seem to do anything else with the brick in your hand? Yeah, well, why can't you put the brick down? Show it in your coit, then you can fucking <laughs> carry another. True. And Claire, Claire and Barry? Um, I don't know what to say about those two, really. Um, I did I did quite like Claire, purely for all the action that she did get to. Barry's, Barry's character, he comes across as quite obviously strong. Um, but I don't, I don't know. 
I, I don't really describe people well. No. Nah. Um, <laughs> there's oh, one other thing I want to touch on. Oh, yeah, and um, back when I first played the game, so, like, first reveals and all that, it was really... Like, it was a big thing to find out that Albert Wesker had a sister. Like, oh, yeah. my God. Like, that's a big thing. So, if you've never played the game before, or you're watching this because you don't want to play it, but you want to know what happens, then that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my God. Um, how Barry is so quick to make that connection, I'll never know. But, um, yeah, it's uh, and I really think it's cool how Barry refers to it as she Wesker, too. That's just, it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, right. So, what would you rate the characters? Um, I would probably give them about seven and a half. Sugar? Seven. Oh, because Barry. Barry's the favourite one. That's a seven. Yeah. That's a seven and a half from us. Um, replay value. Uh, you know. I'm just going to put it out there. I would not lash out and try and play it again. Yeah. Look, Resident Evil Revelations 2 as a game, uh, I played through it. This was my second playthrough. Um, not bad. Not not great. Uh, still, as you know, didn't remember a lot of the puzzles and stuff. Uh, and I feel like playing the storyline again, there's not much to be gained by doing it. Well, I feel like uh, they've poured all their replay value into raid mode, which I have played extensively and really enjoy. Um... It's a way more action orientated version of the game, and that's really good. Um, so for me, replay value uh, probably gets a six, um, and that's just because there's not a lot of replay value in the storyline, I don't think. Um, and that's just my opinion. Uh, Michelle? Yeah, see, I reckon I would, it'd be something I'd play again, um, just purely because I'd probably, there'd be bound to be something that I'd miss in the storyline. That I just didn't click up on, but then you have to watch it the second time. You go, ah, oh. yeah. You eventually re- like you did with the ending when you looked at it again just before. You yeah, realized, I, yeah, yeah, and I realized that's so, yeah. Like, oh yeah, it'd be something worth trying. Anyway. Yeah, that's it. So I'd, I'd be happy to do it again. So I'd probably give it a seven. No, I'd give it a two. <laughs> so, no way, I'd go back to that. Overall, we'll go six and a half. And uh, for the overall game, uh, I'm going to give it a solid eight out of ten. Yeah, eight for me. Uh, solid 7. So, uh, 7.5. Uh, so we rate this game 7.5 out of 10 bottles. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, look, if you haven't played this and you're not a fan of the Resident Evil series, uh, it's a great place to start because it's sort of a little more action orientated than most of them. Um, or definitely if you've got a 360 pick up Revelations 1, that's also not a bad one. Um, but, yeah, basically... Yeah, that's that's all I have to say. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, if you like this, please uh, please subscribe to our channel, uh, tweet, all that sort of stuff, Facebook, message. If you got any ideas for future let's plays, please let us know because you know we're eventually going to get hard up for ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll see you in the next review, which I believe is Doom, the new one that is. So uh, watch this space. It'll be very exciting. And as always. Get a bottle up, yeah, like I'm just about to do.